Let's talk about the other big game yesterday. Carlton up against Fremantle. The question's got to be asked now. For so long this year, we thought Carlton are a very good side, but now do we start to talk about them in premiership material? I think we have to. With the, with the players that they've got now, it was always be, can they hold fire for the next month until you get Pitnett and Wietering and others back into that side? Cherry's going to come back in. And, yeah, so there's others. But early they look to be exposed, BJ, with the Fremantle's tools. They seem to have that aerial dominance, which we expected. But you loved their midfield yesterday. I did, and it was back to that. The, the, last week they were really, well, not so much exposed, but beaten by Richmond in the midfield. And, and that's where their strength lies. So, yes, Cherry to come back into the seat. What I want to highlight here, too, yes, they've got their mids getting to work here. Great body work, great follow-up and you look in there and they're all legitimate big body midfielders. I know that's a term that's been thrown around a lot and has done for uh, many years but the other thing I want to highlight is just a Conning's ability to win the tap there against Darcy and put the ball to the advantage, give them the first crack at it. We see that the Fremantle players are very reactive, but they have to be when they're with such strong bodies that can own the inside. So credit to the Conning to get his hand on the ball first. That, that's where it starts in the air with the Ruckman, but the Blues midfield were dominant well, yesterday. Plus 14 clearance, Kane, and when you have pressure like that, you can beat anybody. Yeah, I, I wanted to highlight this insight that Harry Mackay gave to Fox Footy pre-game. From, um, from the centre bounce, we like to set up kind of on opposite side, so um, nothing too fancy, but as a left footer, probably me operating more on this side is roll around and kick on your left, Charlie, opposite on the right. I mean, we move, match and move a little bit, but um, I think the key is you've got to be pretty patient still because um, the ball can fumble around a little bit and we can handball the ball a bit, so you don't want to go too early. So right. kind of holding your space, um, being patient, knowing the ball is coming to you. So Harry on the left, Charlie on the right from centre bounce. And the thing that he said there, be patient because the ball can bobble around a little bit in the centre bounce. So let's look at this play out yesterday from the centre bounce. Centre bounce stoppage here. So we're going to see a contest. It's nothing clean here. The ball's going to bobble around. So the forwards down their goal side, they've got to be patient. They've got to be holding here. Walsh is going to come through. He was amazing yesterday, Sam Walsh. We'll highlight him in a second. So it's still bobbling. When are you going to lead? When are you going to time your run? And then we're going to stop it here as News kicks his ball. So Harry on the left. Kerno on the right, and how's this player from the centre bounce? Amazing kick here from News to get Charlie Kerno, puts it into the space, he'll lead up and mark. You've got Harry there, and he's going to mark it there. The reason he's there is because he can snap and kick the goal on his right foot. So, terrific insight pre game from Fox Footy, and excellent execution from Carlton's centre bounce brigade, and also their key forwards. Just for young kids watching at home, yeah, you do all your work without taking your space away, and the moment you start leading is when you see the midfielder raise their eyes, not when the ball's bobbling around in dispute. So, good insight there from the players. You posed the question about the big picture for the Blues. Do, do you believe they can win it in 2022? Well, if they get their defenders back, I think they can because their plan yesterday was to win as much contested footy as they can and not allow Fremantle in there. And we saw in the first quarter with limited entries, they kicked three goals and you thought that's going to be what's going to happen today. But then Carlton's pressure was just outstanding, so the ball lived in their half of the ground. When they come up against another side that breaks even in the midfield, they're going to need Weedering back, they're going to need McGovern back. But if they play that way, that, that's, that's September football, that's grand final winning football. If they can handle that when it comes to playing the big game and apply that pressure the whole game, I think they're right in it. That's, that, that, for me, is the point there, Brandon, that you highlight, if they can handle in big games, because they've, they've got little to no experience mm. in big games, playing finals. I think a lot of us here understand an apprenticeship in football, playing finals, going deep into finals, experiencing losses. We all know it's different and there's an element of, of footy that you need to play in finals and they just haven't experienced that. So I think that's the only thing holding them back. Yep. As well as the Tom Stewart issue, the Match Review Office will be looking at this. Uh, Nat Fife at a uh, break in play was... I'm saying pushed into an umpire or, or accidentally propelled into an umpire by Matt Cottrell there. Now, I don't see any issue with that. You can see the, the hand <laughs> contact with the umpire there. I believe it's just from the movement from Cottrell pushing Fife in the back. But again, the match review office will need to sign off on that officially. I don't see a, a so problem there. Fife will be playing next week in my eyes. Definitely nothing. Because I, I can't see how you can. So now you said two, two weeks last well, night I like on your program. Apply, I like to apply the Toby tax to things like this. I didn't think Toby deserved six. So I just want to put that on the, on the agenda. And I don't think Fife deserves anything. Thing. But when that is six, is Fife's not a lesser version of that? Now, it's clearly not as no, no, serious. It's, 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 That's it's, what I'm saying. You can't even compare them, can clear, It's clearly not as serious. It's not well, six, but there is contact with an umpire. And a lot of people, when that happened with Toby, said, we know umpires are there. You cannot touch umpires. He's touched the umpire. I think you've got to remove Toby Green from your that, thoughts because it's not it's not right to compare that with what Nat Fife did. Well, Who was pushed I, into the umpire. I think yes. it's a lesser, a lesser version of that. There was no is there comparison with, with the, the... Is there contact with the umpire? Yeah, but Toby yes. Green walked into an umpire. Yeah, Matt, and Nat Fife was pushed towards, into okay. an umpire. 
Yeah, yeah, well, I think you've been a little Is bit anyone disagreeing? No, I tend to agree with you. And the, the, you provide the context. Toby Green was talking to the umpire and clearly unhappy with the conversation going on. Nate fights distracted by players, obviously sees the green uniform, and he, he, so he was having no conversation or, uh, with the umpire whatsoever. Yeah, so I, I think. think I agree there's contact, but the context around it is completely different. need to be clear. Are you allowed to touch an umpire or not? No, if, not. And if it's a no, which you just said then, then he has to suffer the consequences of touching but an umpire. But there's circumstances that prevail at times where it's inevitable contact. Okay.